stop laughing. Okay. Um, oh my God. I think we have to start over. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Resilient Events podcast number, I think, 25, quarter of a way to 100. And today we're talking about 100 live streaming and digital media predictions, volume four by Ross Brand. We're going to go through all 100 predictions. So lock in, everybody. It's going to be about <laughs> 10 hours. Longest live stream ever. <laughs> all 100. I've got a coffee. I can make it. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be back with you, John. I know it's been a while. If you follow me or John on LinkedIn, you know that we've been talking about all the trends of events and live streaming and and, and everything digital media. But um, I want to talk today a little bit about um, this book specifically, 100 Live Streaming and Digital Media Predictions, which was released in January of 2024. And I am featured in it, and I, I'm not just doing it for me. And we're not even going to talk about my prediction. You can go to wherever you get your books and buy it. Um, but this is a collaborative project between all different types of content creators, um, 100 plus. Actually, I think there's 114 people who have contributed to this book. Um, to give you some context, this is the fourth version. So the process of getting this book out is definitely... Um, probably already mastered by uh, Ross Brand. And it gives us an insight into the industry as a whole on all different types of things when it comes to live streaming and digital media. Uh, some backstory, he reached out to whoever is featured in the book or whoever he wants to be featured in the book. He's got an amazing network in October. And then by January, we have a full book. That's amazing in itself. That's my yeah. prediction for 2024. Books get faster. <laughs> well, with AI, you know, yeah. anything's faster, right? There you go. We're going to um, make sure that you get a copy of this book if you comment predictions in the chat. So hopefully uh, you're watching this, whether on the replay or lis listening, um, definitely uh, you can go get it yourself. Or if you want to win one, just go ahead and uh, put comments. Awesome. Um, can I comment it right now? Yeah, <laughs> you can comment it right now or later. Uh, we'll uh, definitely remind you about that later. But yeah, so that's a little bit of the process. I want to talk about some predictions and see if you agree or disagree or what um, what people are saying about this. So you want to get into it, John? Sure. Yeah, let's get into it. I um, I got to I got to read through several of them, like trend that I noticed. The biggest mm -hmm. trend was like AI, 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 AI. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so I'm wondering if he's going to do a summary version of like mega trends in the book. <laughs> Maybe that could be like the mid year book. You know. Yeah. I like the word trends, but I think it's um it's a little risky or a slippery slope because this is not just a one like digital media or live streaming is not just, Oh, it's just going to happen right now. And this trend is going to happen and then it's going to go away. It's, it'll be evolving. It'll, we'll use it in a different way. Um, and you're right. The talk a lot about AI, but think about when people are filling out their, you know, predictions and being um, collaborative and creating of these predictions, it was October. So yes, AI was around, but I don't think it was as, buzzwordy if that's a word <laughs> um yeah. until you know maybe new year when every everyone even the regular people who don't use ai are thinking hmm, even the dinosaurs uh, dinosaurs <laughs> you know we love dinosaurs here because we know that we can help dinosaurs people we can help them get into the new digital age um which if you have a favorite dinosaur give us a comment and let us know i think a lot of people don't ask that at our age, older, we ask kids that. Why don't we ask young people that or older people? <laughs> anyway. great, great party opener. <laughs> What's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So um, trends, like you said, AI. Um, does it make you feel cringy to read about all the trends of AI? No, I don't think so. It's super top of mind for people. It's uh, It's making life a lot easier in a lot of different ways. And people have no idea really how it's going to help the most yet. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's it's hard to hard to say that we won't be using it more by the end of 2024. Right. So I'm a little I'm a little skeptical. I'm wondering how many people that mentioned AI when they were writing their prediction just said, "What should I write for my prediction for Ross Brand prediction book?" Right. <laughs> prediction. <laughs> <their props>. Yeah. 
Uh, I know. I wonder if the AI. Yeah, you're right. Like, did people use ChatGPT, Google Bard, Claude? You know, what what are they using to generate these predictions? Because you know the language models. Um, I'm gonna get on my AI high horse. They are um, <laughs> they're like three years old unless you train it the right way to like prompt it the right way. So um, yeah, it's it, it it's not gonna give you future predictions. I mean, maybe. Maybe it says like Dogecoin's gonna like go to a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's not digital media. So yeah. by the way, I have Dogecoin. So whatever. Good, you good can luck. judge me. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said good luck. <laughs> hey, I got it before it was a cent. So there you go. I was I was on the trends. I was in the in the predictions that it was gonna blow up before even Elon knew about it. So, awesome. wow, we're managing so many buzzwords here. We're going to get a flag. <laughs> <for them. laughs> All right. Um, let, you want to get into the first one? And, and yeah, absolutely. The first one um, from Brigetti is a fellow live stream producer and podcast host. She specializes in books and um, she's actually based in South Africa, which is really cool. I got to uh, know her through digital media, through connecting online. And um, one of the things she mentions here, which I think a lot of people are wondering when they start um, a digital product, a project, whether it's a YouTube or a podcast or anything where they have to spend their time and money to create content, they're always wondering how they're going to monetize it. And I think that there's so many different ways to do it, but her prediction specifically says content creators can offer customized productions at a price point that can't compete with big media. Um, doors continue to open to create a sustainable income stream. So what do you think in that initial snippet of her prediction? Yeah, I I couldn't. It's pretty hard to argue with. Isn't it? <laughs> Just in terms of like, yeah, customized content at, the, at that price point, like how mm -hmm. else, how else could you get there? Yeah. I mean, we're coming up on the biggest game of the world uh, this weekend, the Super Bowl, and people are paying millions of dollars to have a 15 second spot or 30 second spot. And I think people see that and they, um, they know that they're never going to, they might think that they're never going to get to that point if they're just starting out or they're just starting to create content. And um, advice to those people is um, you as a content creator cannot compete with that, but um, other people who are smaller want people like you to talk about their product or talk about their stuff. And you and I are examples Absolutely. of that. Yeah. It's all like it's target marketing, right? Yeah. Um, it's a long time till any company, most companies that are advertising in the Super Bowl have probably been around for a decade mm -hmm. uh, or, or several, right? Uh, and that's not always not, they also probably have a lot of competitors. And maybe mm -hmm. if you're, uh, if you have a, a small enough target market, maybe you don't even really have real competition. Yeah. So, um, staying, staying focused while you're small can be a great way to, um, get a solid return on the time you're putting in. Mm hmm and we're, I mean, we're examples of that. Uh, we're currently using our PlexiCam um, products. I am, and so are you, John. And we're looking into our camera screens, not like looking up over <laughs> uh, beyond the camera. And um, I know that the people at PlexiCam are appreciative of people like us talking about their product and just learning more about it. And there is a monetization part to it. I don't need to divulge that. People know that sometimes sponsored content is that, but you know, there there's opportunities for that, whether it's a singular project or an ongoing project, um, all of that. So I think people need to think about that when they think about creating content and doing things like this or events. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And just, um, yeah, continuing just to focus on the people that uh, as a, as a creator, just continue to focus on the types of people that like your content and like, what do they want next, um, mm -hmm. for content? And then the, uh, 
the as you as you grow that audience and the uh the the income streams will come mm -hmm. right you're you're definitely uh doing that with with buzz it too so you know focusing on the people that can help propel your product further um people like producers like me or you know, organizations that, which we talk about that in another episode. So if you want to watch all of our episodes or learn about it, go to rizpod.live. There we go. We gamified the episode. <laughs> nice. got it. I got it in first. Dang. <laughs> um, next one, uh, micro events. Now this is obviously something I love to talk about. So I'm going to uh, read what Brian Wallace says here. Brian Wallace. Micro events. We will see a rise in more thoughtful, focused, and targeted regional in person events taking share of the market in the coming years. People crave human contact and in person. So, you are an events person, former wallflower. That's right. <laughs> um, is this a, is this a, a wild prediction or is this something that we're returning to? that was existent uh, prior to the rise of digital media and live streaming. And yeah, I think that for micro events, I, di I didn't get to read Brian's prediction. Did he, what did he, did he say also like vir virtual online or, or only is he talking in person um, or, does he, or does he specify? He didn't say specifically virtual. He just says um, the events industry um, and the pandemic made it impossible for larger events to exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is continually coming back more and more. And uh, it's, it's pretty obvious to most people that like to go outside <laughs> and, and meet other people. That is most of us uh, that uh, the more, the more events we go to, like, uh, honestly, the happier we are, the more people we see, the happier mm -hmm. we are. It's important, hugely important part of all of us. Um, and but like Julius Solaris talks about this, it's just like the number one number one ROI for marketers is, is in, is, is events. And it's mm -hmm. just because you have so much, it's just the trust built into it. When you see, when you go to, you know, it could be, if you go to a football game, you're there with, with the same people that are enjoying the same content. And so like, mm -hmm. you know, you want to be kind of a part of that crowd, do what those people are doing. It's just a natural part of us. And right. so if you can be running events that are bringing those people together and your content is, or your content or your product is, um, appreciated by the other people there already. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's so much more powerful than reading a review online. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, even though testimonials are so great when you just like actually see other humans, you don't know using it. It's like, Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's so much more social proof than what we think of online as social proof. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, and I, I think micro events can also, I mean, like you said, uh, they could be, you said mostly in person, but like they can also be virtual micro events that, you know, you're not, you know, I think we talk about this for our own podcast, like doing something really impromptu and like just bringing together and just staying consistent and talking about the what we're providing value for. Um, I met someone yesterday at the bank who wants to like start up his he's in banking, right? Like he doesn't need to really like it's a big bank they they have people coming in he doesn't really need to sell that but he's always looking to grow his portfolio right because more people sign up to at the bank and and how can you really do that and i was like well why aren't you on linkedin and i was <laughs> like he could literally have and he he has passion about lawn care i'm like why don't you have like a meeting in your community about lawn care and like oh wait wait you don't do lawns like you don't actually care. You're not a landscaping company. No, I actually care about lawns and beautiful landscaping. But <laughs> guess what? Now you can come and do banking with me because I've built that trust. I'm, you know, we're talking about some collective things that we enjoy and it's going to generate business because they're going to trust me and come into my branch and sign right. up. Yeah, just classic network in an easier way to kind of kickstart it, right? And Is not that... always talking about banking, because I mean, what can you? Hey, like the interest rate. Yeah. Says... <laughs> it's not that exciting to most people. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, hey, come is... give me your money and save it here, right? That so. that um that gentleman's name is is that Hank Hill? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You're sure he works at a bank, not the propane store. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. no. 
<laughs> no, but yeah, um, it was it was interesting because I didn't intend to like you know go into the bank and do some content consulting, <laughs> but you know people always ask me what I do and it just comes up and it's natural to like make connections and build relationships that way. And I think it's a testament to what you were saying about, you know, people crave content or, you know, connection and you can only do that through in-person events and they can be 10 people or they can be 200 people. I think you still get um, that connection, which is what Brian says, micro events. Um, a reminder, if you're watching this or listening, uh, go to rizpod.live to watch all the full episodes. Um, if you uh, want to win a copy of this book, go to comments or comments and hit and type in predictions. Oh my gosh, I need to work on my call to action. <laughs> Comment predictions in the notes. <laughs> And you can be entered to win a copy. Um, and it might even be just a few people. So your odds are uh, good. But, you know, maybe this will go viral and it'll, it'll be 300 people. We never know. Can you predict how many people will, will comment? <laughs> no, but I'll ask AI. Um, <laughs> oh, automated. Okay. Next Before one. we move on to the next prediction, yeah. I want to know how valid these predictions are. So what I want to know, do we know, does Ross know, how many of last year's predictions came true? Oh, that's a good question. I'll ask Ross. Yeah, I have the copy. I can go through it and do some homework and um, see like how many. Um, one thing about this is it's a collaborative effort. So I think he, you know, encourages other people. There's a lot of trends. Like you said, people talk about AI. I think there's only like five of us talking about events or micro events. Yeah. Um, and... I wonder how that will change for next year and see, you know, the arc because, you know, all the contents there just has to be, maybe you can put it into chat GPT and be like, this is the book from last year. Can you summarize in table format? <laughs> oh, this is a project for me. Um, here's the book, summarize this book and put it into a table of how many, what topics are talked about percentage wise and then analyze that. So, yeah, right. Um, no, it'd be interesting to see uh, how many of them come, come true. I'm also kind of wondering how many of them are, are kind of the, how many of them are, are kind of similar, right? Have kind of the same oh, yeah. types, types mm -hmm. of content. Um, but yeah, do you want to jump into prediction number 17? Yeah. There, the, I mean, I'll say the thing about there's a lot of them that are similar. There's some people that are be very succinct in what their prediction is. Some people talk about a lot. I think it just depends on how you want to portray yourself. But um, it's kind of like you're getting people all in this. This book is you're getting all the content creators that like to make predictions in one book, in one room, and then talking about the same thing. So, yes, there are a lot of similarities, but it also can give you some insight into what um, people that are plugged into the trends and, and how things are changing. Um, yeah, what I'm most interested to read through is, is like kind of come up with a consensus from it to see where everybody is thinking, mm -hmm. right? Which would be mm -hmm. interesting in itself for everybody in this book is essentially 100% invested in in live streaming and digital media. So yeah, um, from them, it'd be great to hear. Uh, it is. It's like it's like a tiny little event in itself. It is a yeah. non non digital. Um, no, not non in person yeah. little event. Print is not dead. Look at yeah. here. It's, this is proof. <laughs> yeah. Digital media people are talking about about something a book. <laughs> in a book. <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. Yes. Let's go into number seventeen. Um, and no offense to anyone who might be watching this and didn't get their prediction pick to talk about. Um, I literally just opened the book and, you know picked one and make sure that it wasn't the same as the first one or the second one. And you notice I didn't even talk about mine. So the suspense I, is killing me. <laughs> Rizpod.live will be the copy. biggest website on the internet. <laughs> Riz's prediction. <laughs> Rizpod.live. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. This is from John Burke. He owns a media company and it um he's actually uh releasing a documentary um on tv this year so 
Um, this will be interesting. I'm in a book with uh, someone who's releasing a documentary. Now, I don't know which platform, but it doesn't really matter. So um, he wrote um, episodic story arc, short form storytelling will take off. And he says, thank you, TikTok, real shorts, and our digitally rewired brains. It will migrate to traditional linear TV and streaming channels. So your documentaries, um, I will I will say I watched one that was nine minutes long this yesterday. It was just a recap of um, a weekend soccer match because you know I love soccer, but it was in it was done in documentary like cinematic style, um, bringing in different elements. But you know I consumed it. I sat there for 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, I like my my club and I will watch something like that. But think about it in uh, a business standpoint, in um, a matter of like, you know, you're talking about your personal story or what's affected you. Like, why wouldn't you want to create a short documentary talking about your business or something that's impacting you? That's, I, I thought that, that was really cool because, you know, uh, I think a lot of people are stuck. And, and I think we do that with this episode, with this podcast. Like we try not to go over 30 minutes um, because, you know, attention spans are shorter and shorter. Um, and we want to deliver as much value and laughter in uh, less than 30 minutes. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Um, it's... I'm I'm interested to see like how this can play out, like how more more brands bring this into like, especially like into traditional media. Like it'd be interesting to see things like these shorter, mm -hmm. shorter episodes, like just like for instance on Netflix or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like how they, how it, how the shorter form content kind of, mm -hmm. kind of spreads through the existing kind of media landscape, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. definitely a trend that I can't see kind of slowing down. So I'm interested to see like where it goes into like what we consider, you know, Netflix is almost a dinosaur now, right? It's like, what is that? Like yeah. 15 years old, 20, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see the short form, um, like interface on Netflix in terms of like, okay, I don't want to sit down and watch a movie for an hour and a half. Maybe I want to watch like a, you know, a six part series of, you know, something about <laughs> married at first sight or some, you know, something silly, but um, there's not like even shorter episodes maybe on for their app or something like that. So I wonder if they're thinking about that um, for the long term. Um, there's a show I watch a reality TV show. They, their episodes are mm, like an hour and a half long. I watch them cause I'm, I'm addicted to the, to the show, but they have a separate, like docu series that's kind of like showcasing their past um, guests, and it's like I think twenty minutes, fifteen minutes on YouTube that talks basically about their history of the show, uh, uh, the history on the show. So it's still content and it's episodic. I think they're doing six or seven episodes of past people that have competed. So you know, you're, you're saturating the market. You got your YouTube TV with your, um, your MTV show, and then you have your YouTube only series. It's not on the, it's not on MTV. So definitely there. So. Right. Awesome. Any other, any other predictions that are, mm -hmm. um, that you want to bring I predict up? that if you're listening, you're going to be going to our YouTube channel and hitting subscribe. You can go rizpod.live. <laughs> there you go. I predict that Marissa wins 2024. <laughs> Speaking of uh, short episodes, we're about wrapping up. I want to talk a little bit about um, our next episode. We're going to be talking to a woman in events and tech. She specializes in event tech and AI. So we'll get more buzzwordy, obviously, <laughs> next awesome. time. And then we have another guest lined up that we're just finalizing the date. So if you um, would like to learn more about it, you can go to rizpod.live and follow us there. Any last words, John? I'm going to get a bell so I can pull it every time you say rizpod.live. <laughs> we need to have a, hey, Katie, are you listening? Like we need to have like a little tally mark like every time. 
<laughs> we gotta figure out how to put that up. Um, that would be fun. Rizpod.live count. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> Bing. Awesome. <laughs> well, great being back online with you in a in a new place again. I think this is my third office that I'm yes. broadcasting with you from, and we're continuing to do it no matter the difficulties. Yes. So it's been a, been a slice. Yes. All right. So we will see you again, and thank you for watching and listening. Bye. Bye.